Insect Glaive. One of the most mobile weapons in the game with fun combos, extra layers of depth through kinsect mechanics, strong flexibility in its moveset, and although its mounting speed is fairly low, it has unlimited access to mounting attacks. But how do you maximize the damage on your Insect Glaive? Well, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And we're... The, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math Guys. Guy. And this is Monster Hunter Meta, Raw Insect Glaive Builds. The people have spoken. We recently did a Patreon poll on what meta video to do next. The results came in and it was overwhelmingly for Insect Glaive. We plan on doing many more of these patron-only polls for video topics in the future. So be sure to check out the link to our Patreon in the description. Today we'll be going over the meta raw sets for Insect Glaive. We'll be covering Elemental Insect Glaive in a separate video because there's a few of those to look at. We'll briefly touch on why we don't have any Aerial Insect Glaive sets and why Ground Helicopter is just mathematically superior for damage. And finally, we'll explain Insect Meta. AKA why Pseudocath is the Mac Daddy of Kinsects. I want to start off with a quick disclaimer. All the builds, analysis, breakdowns, and everything we do in the channel are not meant to tell you how to play the game. Unless you are a speedrunner or otherwise care about Max Deeps, these are not the only way to play and we are not suggesting that. The purpose of what we do is to educate and inform. It's to give you the factual information on the relative strengths of different builds and playstyles so that you can make informed decisions. Play how you like and enjoy yourself. It is a video game after all. All of the sets in this video will feature our standard attack buffs along with the triple kinsect buffs to showcase what the EFR and damage looks like at the highest possible end for normal play. Kinsect buffs are a percentage raw attack modifier, so a raw build that is stronger when buffed is still stronger without kinsect buffs. However, the elemental damage is unaffected by this buff, making raw even stronger, which we'll be discussing in our next video covering those elemental IG builds. But let's start with the bad news. Why no aerial insect glaive? The motion value per second is suboptimal at best and trash at worst. You don't get to benefit from max might, which means you lose out on affinity, which means you're losing sharpness and crits. Also, with a very few exceptions, the parts you actually hit while you're using aerial IG are generally very low hit zone value areas. Most monsters' backs and wings aren't even weak points for Severus, so you don't get weakness exploit, and you also have a low hit zone value, so you're dealing less damage anyway. There are two distinct exceptions to this, which are Lunastra and Arctempered Xeno, but even then, Ground IG still is faster at killing them. And in the long run, all you're really doing is trading damage for mounting ability and safety. And when we say mounting ability, we do not mean efficiency. Almost every other weapon in the game will mount faster than IG, assuming they have a ledge or a wall to use. The advantage that IG gets is that its aerials can be used at any time you have stamina, meaning you can always build up mounting damage. But the amount of mounting damage per attack is pretty low to compensate for this accessibility. If you like Aerial Insect Glaive, great! But we're here to discuss the meta sets, so we won't be including any aerial builds this time because they aren't meta. I know this comes as a disappointment to many of you, but we're all making sacrifices here. I don't get to show off my favorite Insect Glaive, Vice. It's so pretty. I adore it so much that I had art made of it. Thank you, Peacats. Simply put, it lacks the raw it needs to compete with the other builds we have coming up. The high affinity and natural white don't really matter that much when we have enough power creep to stack on a minimum of 125% more affinity on weak points and fit handicraft and several other damage skills in. Affinity is just easier and more cost efficient to stack than raw in Monster Hunter World. With that in mind, on to the sets. First up is Kyar Para. Now you may be wondering why we're showcasing a status build. After all, who needs paralysis when you have juicy high damage numbers? Well, that's because the paralysis is basically a bonus to the juicy high damage numbers. At 633.31 EFR, this Insect Glaive hits like a truck. Even without the para in the set, this IG would be a top contender. The crit status along with 100% affinity and IG's natural fast attack animations means you get 2-3 paras on most monsters as a bonus. An extremely juicy bonus. Health Augment is of course mandatory as this is a peak performance build. This is in our humble opinion the best generalist IG in the game at the moment. It has the highest EFR a raw IG can reach, except for the Bloss IG but more on that later, and it gets several paras as a free bonus. You pretty much want to use this against anything that is not para immune or weak to dragon. But in that case, what do you use against something that is weak to dragon? The answer is the Devil Joe Glaive. 
You can use Nergi Helm if you want, Gala just gives the build a bit more flexibility for substitutions. 8.5 less EFR than Para, if something is even tickled by Dragon, this will match or beat the Para in damage. Outside of the extremely dragon weak monsters like the Wrath family, Joe, and Behemoth, it's hard to recommend which monsters you want to use this over. It's hard to compare the damage gain on Joe versus the potential damage gain from 1 to 2 paraprocs, which is highly dependent on player skill. A very skilled player will see minimal DPS uptime games from the paraprocs because they already have extremely high damage uptime. Likewise, a less skilled player will want to use the para even against Joe to get some easier damage in. So use your best judgment. Alright, it is officially later, so let's touch on the Diablos IG. The Diablos IG is technically the highest EFR IG build you can get. But unlike Diablos, it is super fragile. Kinda like the Diablos' marriage. Or Diablos when Aki is around. There are three variations to the meta Blos IG build. Let's start with the most realistic one first. At 659.87 EFR, this is the lowest EFR out of the variations, but the most realistic to run. 10 units of white, but effectively infinite as long as you hit weak points and have good stamina management for max might. However, it only takes an average of 20 weak point whiffs to lose your white sharpness. Once this build loses white sharpness, literally every other build in this video beats it. Basically, this build requires you to play perfectly in order to beat the other ones. But assuming you can is the highest damage possible IG build. And yes, even with all of these caveats, it's the most realistic to run. The second variation simply has an attack augment instead of a second affinity augment. This gains you 2.58 EFR. Not a lot, but it's an increase. However, with 95% affinity, you only have 200 hits of white on average, assuming you have perfect stamina management and also only hit weak points. This is technically enough to kill a monster, but you better pray to RNGesus for those crits. This is also the amount of affinity you'll have if you run a health augment, which is not recommended. If you're running a health augment without a peak performance build, it's assumed your play isn't perfect, in which case you should just run a different build on this list. And finally, the last variation of this build runs double affinity augments with a final level of crit boost. Again, when played perfectly, this build hits 100 units of white on average. This nets you a, air quotes, juicy, air quotes, 2.41 EFR. This is technically the highest EFR build possible for an IG that can in theory maintain white sharpness, in theory, if you reset for crits. A lot. Practically speaking though, unless you play perfectly and get lucky with crits, this set will hit blue sharpness pretty fast. And again, that's a 10% damage drop. And at that point, any set on this list would have done better. Insect Glaive tends to roll a lot, and its follow-up attacks are generally too fast for stamina to reach max again. So realistically, Blos IG isn't a good option, but if you feel like resetting constantly for perfect play in crit RNG, it's technically the strongest option. Finally, we have an old contender that was once in the limelight. The Nergi Luna IG. So the Ruin IG was once a contender for the best generalist raw IG. With peak performance and max might active, this old boy hits exactly the same EFR as the Kya Para IG, 633.31. However, the combination of 10 more conditional max might efficiency and the low DPS output of Blast makes this IG weaker than Para in most situations. The DPS gain from 2 to 3 Paras that the Kiar Para IG gives you will generally net you more DPS gain than a few Blast procs over the course of a hunt. And in any matchup, even slightly weak to Dragon, the Joe IG will net you more damage. The main place for this IG now is against Nergagante. Blast is fairly effective against him and can make chain tripping him with IG much easier. This is because para can actually be a detriment against him, since the spike breaks during the paras do not trip Nergagante. This makes chain tripping him a lot less optimal because that means you don't want to be hitting spikes while you have him parrot, which is less damage. And it simply makes timing and controlling those spike breaks a lot more difficult. But against dragon immune monsters like Oda Garon, this IG is the best assuming you haven't gotten the Kya Para IG from ATKT yet. Alright, let's talk Kinsex, so why Pseudocath? Pseudocath is the fastest, high damage bug in the game. Speed is the most important aspect of a Kinsect in terms of max DPS output during a hunt. A fast bug means less DPS downtime, less buff misses, and second highest bug damage isn't anything to sneeze at either. Any minor DPS increase you get from using a higher damage bug does not compensate for the lost DPS from missing opportunities to hit things with your big stick. 
This need for speed is what makes the Pseudocath the best Kinsect in our opinion. The only thing that comes close is Dragon Soul. Now Dragon Soul is almost as fast, but almost is the difference between missing or hitting a spot on a very fast monster. And the biggest issue is that even though it's only slightly slower, the animation of Dragon Soul makes it feel a lot more sluggish. And while mathematically the speed is not that much lower, this feel can have a direct impact on your gameplay and how well you do. Both of these factors can be the difference between missing a buff during your run and possibly losing your new personal best time. Which is hard for me to admit because of course, Dragon Soul wins in the rule of cool. It's so pretty. If you're comfortable hitting buff points with a slower Kinsect, go for it. If your accuracy suffers from not using Pseudocath, use Pseudocath. Additionally, one of the benefits of Pseudocath is that focusing on a single Kinsect makes it easier to build elemental variants. This way you only need six different Kinsects, one for each element and a raw Kinsect. There is literally no downside to using elemental variants of Kinsects other than having to build them and elemental match each hunt. All it does is make the numbers that your Kinsect does bigger, it's literally free damage. And that about does it guys. As always, thank you for watching the video. Let us know which weapon you'd like us to do next in the comments, and let me know if you agree that Vice and Dragon Soul is the best looking combo. If you're looking for hunters to hunt with, you can check out our Discord, The Mathalos Nest. You can also check me out on Twitch where I stream almost every day. Shout out to Honey for providing the tools we use to make sets, and a huge thank you to our patrons, Ven, Haika, Cheklim, Yoshicho, John Cowan, Ken, Robin, Bram, Lightweight, Skylar, Lupin, Mongus, Lord Sidonay, Jamie, and everyone else who's been supporting us on Patreon. We recently ran a poll for patrons to see what weapon we do next, so if you want to get in on that, check it out. And finally, thanks to you for watching the video. We have some new content coming out soon, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when those go live. And until next time, happy hunting, hunters. Bye! Bye.